Hi friends and family. I wanted to make this video really quick because there is something that Eric and I have been struggling with for the past couple of years. And when quarantine happened, Eric and I discussed that this was something that we needed to start sharing with family and friends and also to reach out to anybody else that is struggling with this and so they don't feel like they're alone. Many people are starting to share about their infertility journey and secondary infertility is almost unheard of. I didn't realize that was even a thing until we found out that that is what we were going through. We have two healthy girls and so we didn't think that infertility was something that we were going to have to worry about. In 2015, I had two miscarriages, and in January 2016, I had another miscarriage because this was our third kind of back-to-back -back miscarriage. The doctor decided that he wanted to do a DNC to see why I'm having miscarriages, if there's anything genetically wrong. When the test came back, it came back that everything was fine, that the baby was healthy and was a boy. We started talking to our doctor about things that we can do to try to have a baby and we had another miscarriage. So our doctor had told us if we wanted to continue to try, that we should look into starting IVF. But because of our case of having kids, being able to get pregnant, but not being able to carry that pregnancy, our doctor said that we should go straight to IVF so I can be closely monitored and be on uh, medication. So in late 2018, I started doing my treatments for our first round of IVF. We had thought going into this that because I'm young and had kids before that we were going to do IVF and we were going to get a baby out of it the first time. When I started doing the IVF, there was tons of medication and injections. Sometimes I was having to do four injections a day. Some Eric was try help had to help me with. When we did our egg retrieval and was getting ready to do our transfer, only two embryos had made it. So it was hard to understand because we did all this medication and all this work and we only had two. Our original plan was to transfer one embryo so we can have one baby. And the doctor had told us that it was going to be a 50-50 chance whether it was going to work. So he suggested for us to transfer both embryos to at least get one child. After being on bed rest and continuing our medication, we found out that the IVF did not work. So after all of that, going through everything and then getting nothing out of it, no babies, no leftover embryos, if we were going to do IVF again, we would have to start all over. This doctor believed in less medication, less injections, and try to do things more uh, natural. So going into this, we were hopeful and started doing testing. With that round of IVF, we were able to have three embryos 
and I was excited this time because last time we only had two this time we have three so I felt like we had more chances and when it came time to decide how many embryos we were going to transfer Eric and I decided to do two knowing that there was a possibility that we could have had twins you know two embryos two babies but at that time with everything that we have been through we decided that we would rather have two children than no children at that time so after going through that round of IVF when we found out that it didn't work it was really hard to understand and comprehend that here I was able to get pregnant naturally and those ended miscarriage but with IVF being everything timed and on the right medication that it d doesn't even work not even a positive and a miscarriage so it was hard to understand that but we did have our one embryo left so we started doing testing and I wanted to make sure I did anything and everything before we transferred our last embryo. During the testing right before our last transfer in 2019, I found out that I was pregnant and was closely monitored by my doctor. I was on medication and I still had a miscarriage. Every time that I found out that I was pregnant with each miscarriage, I cried not because I was excited or happy. I would cry because I knew that the chances of me having a miscarriage was probably going to happen. So I couldn't get happy or excited. Now going through this journey, I have made friends, was on the same journey, and those friends have no kids at all. So I am very, very thankful for my girls and that I'm thankful that I have children. But going through the struggle and going through the pain of miscarriages and the pain of the procedures for IVF doesn't hurt any less. It doesn't make it less sad because you have kids. You still go through hurt, you still go through pain. We would frequently throughout the years have people, friends, family comment asking us why we have the girls have such a big gap. Why don't we have another kid? Why are we waiting? Why don't we try to have a boy? And mine and Eric's answer would always be, I don't know, or maybe if it happens, it happens. Not to say that any of those people or any of those comments were meant to do any hurt or meant in any wrong way. They all, you know, were positive. It's just they didn't know what we were actually going through. I wasn't ready to be open about it. Why share now? Well, Eric and I have been talking about this for a while and this is something that we wanted to start sharing with family and friends. One, so they would understand why we may have missed events or did not go to things and sometimes it would be because I would be on bed rest from IVF or sometimes it would be because I'm going through a miscarriage. Also there was things that were hard like baby showers. I have before tried my hardest to go to a baby shower and would get dressed. One time I even went and got the gift. Then right when I got in the car started crying and had to come straight home. Now is a time that I can talk about it before I couldn't even talk about it I would start talking about it and I'd cry even trying to make this video I've tried to make this video several times and now I'm able to start talking about it so I feel like I can go ahead and start sharing with family and friends and my main reason why I want to start sharing about it and talking about it is because I know when I was going through it I didn't know anybody else that was going through it and I felt very alone. I didn't know anybody else that was my age that was going through anything like this. 
So to start sharing about it with other people, I hope this helps other people feel that they're not alone, that if it is something that they are going through, that other people go through it too. I used to stereotype myself, unfortunately, that I was young, I was, I'm Hispanic, that you know, people have kids easily and I never thought in a million years that having kids was going to be something that I was going to have to struggle with. All the things that I had to go through. If you would have told me years ago that I was going to go through IVF, I would have not even thought about that. It wouldn't have been something that was even a thought. To go through all of this and not know anybody that are going through this or went through it, it was hard to understand why we were going through this. So that is one of my main reasons why I wanted to go ahead and share this to hopefully reach out to people so they don't feel alone. I mean, Layla's gonna be eight. She's almost eight. And here we still don't have anything. I hope to make more videos there is a lot more details um, between IVF miscarriages that I wanted to go ahead and share to also bring awareness and if anybody else is going through the same journey. So thank you again for everybody watching this and I hope that this can help others. I hope that it can help people understand and I hope that it can help people that are struggling and not feel alone.